good morning and a very warm welcome to Frugal Full on this slightly chilly autumn day. How are you? I hope that if you're doing a low or no spend year that it's going really well. Let us know in the comments below what you're up to. Did you start off the year with a no or low spend and then as the year's gone on you've changed your mind and ended that? Or is it the other way around that you were spending more than your budget or didn't have a budget earlier in the year and then you've come to start these things later in the year? Please share with us in the comments how your journey with budgeting and frugality is going this year. Are you a seasoned frugalite or is this all a new concept to you? We'd love to hear all about it in the comments. So this now marks three quarters of the way through my low and no spend year, which is really exciting. I'm really, really happy to be doing this challenge this year. It's really helped me think about budgeting in a whole new light. It's given me such valuable insights into budgeting and it's changed some of the ways that I not only spend money, but store the money till I need it, organize the money. Um, it's, it's been a complete game changer for the better. So I'm really looking forward to sharing how September's budgeting has gone with you. So first I'm going to show you some yellow sticker foodie bargains from earlier in the month. Then I'll come back and we can have a run through how it went in September with budgeting. So just a quick summary about how I'm doing my budget this year. So every week I have a food and household essentials budget of £25 because I'm in Scotland. So it's pounds sterling for me. So it covers food, the £25 a week, it covers food. It covers things like cleaning products and household items like that. It covers the food bank because I'm buying one item a week equivalent of items for the food bank. So by the end of the year, I'll have 52 things to give the food bank because even on a tight budget, giving is still really important to me, even if it's just something small to try and help people in some way, that really is an important quality that I want to still cultivate through budgeting. It covers, what else does it cover? Oh yeah, toiletries it covers as well. So, and it covers like over the counter medical things like pain relief, plasters, that kind of stuff. So that's the 25 pounds a week budget. So some months are five week months, some months, like September's been, are four week months. And I had five pence, five whole pennies <laughs> that got carried over from August. So I've had £100 and five pence as my budget. When I manage to sell things, and if I manage to sell things on eBay or Vinted, which doesn't happen that often these days, because I think with the cost of living, People don't seem to be buying the things that I've got listed as often, which is a pity. I've just got like bits and pieces that I'm no longer keeping and I've decluttered. Good, we're fine. Yeah, so what I do is if I manage to like make some wee sales of bits and pieces like unwanted clothes and stuff on Vinted or eBay, I can add that in to that £25 a week budget if it helps. Because realistically, it can be really challenging to stick to that. It's not very much. It doesn't go very far these days because the cost of food has gone way, way up in the last few years, especially like the last couple of years or so. It's unbelievable. So that can just help give me a bit of breathing space to stay on track with this goal because it's quite ambitious to try and do it for 25 quid a week. The other thing is that I have separate sinking funds they cover various different categories and I have certain amounts that I allow myself in those sinking funds each month. I'll go into that in more detail when we look at how September's gone. You'll hear what the sinking fund categories are, but just to say kind of broadly speaking, there are several that are like month to month expenses. So during any given month, that's kind of like my sort of pocket money of what I can spend on that type of thing. 
and then there are others where it's me putting away money because once or twice or just a kind of small number of times a year I might need to dip into that fund so they're kind of like medium term I guess sinking funds and then I also have some that I don't really go into in the video because they're for longer term goals so therefore I'm not touching those sinking funds but just I put a bit in and then gradually I can work towards longer term goals with those like for example going back to the wonderful Japan that I love so much so that's like a five year plan or something so just a wee bit each month and it will build up slowly but surely to be able to go back again so Without further ado, let's see these bargains and I'll see you in a few minutes. We can look at September and how it's gone. See you in a second. I have some super bargains to show you. Super duper bargains. Hello, Bella. Here's a Bella. There are three fruit yogurt smoothies for 28p each, down from 95p. There's, so that'll be three really delicious on-the-go snacks 68p for five bagels there's two of those there is a tiger beer because i have a little snow leopard here there she is Keep care. so 68p so we're talking 13 pence a bagel <laughs> it's amazing i had to had to go for it what other kind of lunchy type of things have we got 27p for a pack of six tortillas which look as if they've been reduced twice because they would have already been reduced to 50 then again to 27 so the plan with these is um the plan with these and these will be freezing them maybe freezing the smoothies as well then dinner type things now i do sometimes have meat and fish very occasionally meat if it's reduced like this the fish i'm just having a little bit in my diet for the nutrition so super bargainous pizzas 75p each i'll freeze them i'll probably cut them into quarters first partly to save space but also for portion control there's two smart price Kievs, again, only because it's reduced. I don't want to be buying any that are full price. So I'll freeze and that'll be the protein part of two dinners. 120 for a vegan steak pie. That would be frozen as well. And then I'll probably portion out and freeze this. It looks so, so delicious. And when I really, really need a pizza, delicious treat, dinner, and I would be tempted to have a takeaway that's very, very expensive but don't want to blow my budget, this is going to be in the freezer as a great standby. Probably half a pizza. So £1.47 is much cheaper than a takeaway pizza. So it's worth, definitely worth every penny. And then I've got... Again, I'll probably portion and freeze this. 160 down to 61p. It's a lovely high quality baked bread. It is um, a cob. And then and what I'll probably do is batch cook some curry soup. And that can be a really welcome addition. That can probably be a good lunchy thing as well. And then this is going to be a special treat over the next couple of days. I've got a beautiful focaccia for only £1.35 and it's not for you, Bella. Extra special sea salt and rosemary tomato focaccia. Oh, doesn't it look good? So I'll have a bit tonight and a bit tomorrow and maybe a bit the next day. Bella, leave the food alone. And finally, to go with the beautiful bread, I have got for only £1.65 a dip selection. So what I'll probably do is have some today and have the rest tomorrow. If it's still fresh enough, I'll be careful with some nice bread or something or that focaccia again. So 
I thought it was definitely good value for money to pick up these bargainous bits. Wasn't planning to spend on them, but most of it can be frozen if I can find a way to squeeze it into the freezer. Um, I'll cross that bridge soon. <laughs> and it's also a bit of a special treat. And it also prepares me for some backup treat dinners to mitigate wanting to splurge on takeaways which would blow the budget. Oh, also, some bananas in here. There's some kind of weird mark on them, which is not very nice. So I'm going to wash them and hopefully they're okay. But I like bananas as an easy go-to, quick, healthy, tasty, super frugal snack. So that was all my yellow sticker bargains today. Right, let's have a look at September's budget. I'm doing things the opposite way round to usual this time and also it's on the computer rather than printing for the sake of the per trees. So I hope it's reasonably clear. I can see a kind of weird rippling effect right now. So I'm hoping that that's not an issue for you guys. So I have different sinking funds like I described earlier. So let's just start from the top here. Now, usually I have 25 pounds for social there was an extra 85 I carried over from August. And I usually have 15 pounds for day trips. This might be all, the amounts in these sinking funds might be slightly different month by month because I kind of modify it. I evaluate my budget month by month and I modify it if I need to. But I want to keep it as similar as possible just to kind of keep the budget low. But I might tweak them a little bit here and there. So it's 25 15. What I sometimes do is I merge these two because sometimes the day trip is really just like ends up being rather than a full day trip. It's catching up with people and having a wee kind of catch up, social catch up. So in this case, this month I've done that, I've merged them. So I had 40.85, 36.75 spent. So £4.10 was left. Now, I've moved that to the food fund because I needed some extra for the food fund, which I'll explain when I talk about that in the next bit. Now, I've described in previous videos how in August, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was August. The months kind of roll into each other sometimes. I think it was August. I ended up needing to buy quite a lot of items that I didn't have the budget for, but I knew that I could cover it by sacrificing three of my three of my other sinking funds for the rest of the year. And it's like an IOU situation. So rather than having that money in those sinking funds for the rest of the year, it pays me back what I'm owed that I bought in advance. Whoops, I dropped my pen. <laughs> I have this sinking fund that's not on here called a budget buffer. It doesn't have very much in, but the idea of it is it just creates a slight shock absorber if there was some kind of unexpected expense. But it's not a kind of proper emergency fund, but at least it's some form of a shock absorber, which is helpful. But what I also use that budget buffer for sometimes is if I see things and I know, hold on, sorry guys, I've got a bit of a dry throat. Um, if I see things and I think it's going to be beneficial to get them because it's way cheaper, what I do is I'll use the money from the budget buffer and then it's a kind of IOU situation. So I pay the budget buffer back to bring it back up to the small amount that it is at the moment. But hey, it's good to have a wee bit of a cushion. Oh dear. There were some practical clothing items I was needing and I was able to get these on Vinted and charity shops much cheaper than I would have. Saved me a lot of money to get them in advance and pay back the budget buffer. So that's what I've done. I got some supports for my wrist which I still get pain with but it's not as bad as it used to be but still can be an issue 
some different items I needed to repair stuff in the house. A steamer, a steamer iron, because that's a lot easier to use with my dodgy right wrist than a traditional iron. I needed to get a lighter duvet because the one I had, I was just getting night sweats and it wasn't great. Electric toothbrush has been a game changer because I had a bit of pain in my gums because I was brushing too hard and I got some digital scales. So the money from all of that is going to be IOU. So £5 from the research studies budget buffer each month. I won't be buying anything from research studies. It all gets paid back to the budget buffer. Same with the £10 for the allotment for the rest of the year. And the same with the essentials and stock ups. Oh, it's actually for sinking funds. Apologies. The essentials and stock up fund, it's paid back to the IOU. And so is the treats fund. But if I had to buy anything in any of these categories for the rest of the year, because there's no sinking fund anymore, now I have to figure out a way of doing that using my weekly £25 a week budget, which would put pressure on that budget. And I want to stay on track with that. So it's going to help curb any spending. That's the idea. And I hope that I can still achieve my goals for the rest of the year. But we will find out and I'll bring you on the journey to find that out. Whoops. Okay, so we've covered these. There's also, uh, whoops, there's a Christmas and birthdays and gifts fund, £20 a week. I bought some stocking filler items and I sent a parcel. So I've got £12.7 that I'm going to carry over into October. The wee holiday fund, I didn't use anything, so that money's built up a little bit in that fund. Same with the vets, because my girl shouldn't need to go till May, hopefully, God willing. And then swimming fund, likewise, because I've got an existing swimming pass at the moment, this is me building up so I can buy one next year, because it's a really positive thing in my life being able to do that. So there's no need to use that fund. So that covers all of that. Now let's go back and we can look at the week by week spending. Right, week by week. So, whoops. So a hundred pounds, five pennies is how it began. And what happened is like this IOU thing, like I described, I was doing that in August with some items that were needed well, they were needed, but what happened is I bought them in advance because it was much cheaper because there were deals to bulk buy. And I explained it in more detail in the August videos. So if you check those out, I go into it way more and I show you what the items were, the foodie items. But they formed two different camps. There was an essentials stock up frugal store. It was um, things like jars and bottles of things so as I've opened and used those they are IOU paid back to budget buffer so that's what this 2278 is as I say more details in August budget and then in household cleaning I bought salt for the garden because it kills the weeds without nasty chemicals baking powder for my cleaning I prefer to try and use these kind of home remedy type things where I can, kind of natural things and less chemicals. Also, because of the fact I don't have the sinking funds, I needed to buy a rucksack, which was eight pounds because I had to throw the old rucksack out. It was all holy. I'd had it since I was in high school. So it did pretty well. That was a long time ago. <laughs> so I spent 50, 33, now, hold on a minute. Is that right? I need to double check. 22.77 toiletries, frugal tuck shop. So that was, um, I've got something to tell you about that in a second, but I'm going to check my total for the other bit. Right, online shopping, I got my food and I deducted a gift card I had in Bella's because she has a separate category for her budget. 
1762 sweets. So the food came to 3608. Now I'll be back in two seconds. So it turns out that I've actually massively miscalculated. And this, <laughs> how I've done this, I've got no clue. 3533. So I'm actually, I've actually got 15 pounds more than I thought in my budget for September. How bizarre. That's really bizarre and I don't understand how I've miscalculated so much. <laughs> I think I must have had part of this written somewhere else and I've got all higgledy-biggledy, biggledy piggledy. So sorry about that. That changes things a bit. So, right, where was I? Okay, so the frugal tuck shop. Now there was a whole load of info about this in that August budget video, but basically, I got stuff like I bulk bought things like snacks, including wee cheeses and wee crisps and stuff like that. Whoa, what are you doing camera? That's it. Juices, that kind of thing. The idea was they were going to last throughout August, September and maybe even on, into October. And then as I use the things, pay myself back in the budget buffer. So I've spent 1771 on all the used things. Oh, it included beers as well. I still have a whole load of juices left because I got loads of juices really cheap. But in hindsight, it's fine for stuff like juice. It's definitely not fine for stuff like crisps, cheese and beers. Because guess what happened? Me, the gannet had them all way sooner than I should have, so it was not cost effective <laughs> at all. So won't be doing that. It's useful for things that are like juices and that kind of thing, or things I'm not gonna be tempted to overindulge on. So useful for knowing that going forward. I still like it as a technique, but it's got to be things I'm not gonna just use up really quickly. Okay. So 94.18 for all that, except that that's actually 15 pounds less. So it's 79.18. I then sold 750 vintage 46 eBay. So that was really great, which means that I actually had 59.32 left, except it's actually 74.32, which is great. Week two. I got 48.47 worth of stuff. Now, I don't know why I've put that in the food bit. <laughs> Who knows? But 48.87 included all the food shopping in Asda and Aldi. It also included the food bank items. I did buy myself something for 20.59 from eBay, but I'm probably going to sell this thing. I've kind of had a change of heart, but Nevertheless, it's still spending right now. Now this should be over here. I also spent 681 at Screwfix because my boiler wasn't working and I thought because my boiler has a key holder but no key that I needed a key for doing the water pressure. Turns out it's actually a valve. I hadn't ever needed to do it, which is good. So now I've got this key that I don't need that was £6.81, which I'll probably end up selling or something at some point. But it's still spending right now. So I spent £69.46. I actually sold some more stuff on Vinted, which was handy, which was £17.60. So £7.46 left for the month. But as I say, that's actually incorrect. So it's £22.46. I don't know how I managed to make that error. Then I only bought £3.14 of stuff in Aldi in week three, leaving 4 32 that's actually 19 32 Week four, I spent 
in on Vinted, I bought a couple of things for four thirty eight five pounds and nine and I didn't actually need to buy food because I had a bunch of stuff to use up so I only spent two thirty on a sandwich in week four I gained four pounds from Vinted and I gained four pounds that I had left over in the social sinking fund that I moved across but with the spending I ended up with a final balance of what's actually £15.65, which is great. So I did move 65 back to the social sinking fund, but what I might do is I might allow myself the 15.65 to move over into October's food budget. In the first instance I think I'm going to change it to that but that will get me started off on a better footing for October it's a five week month and 25 pounds a week so that'll just give me a wee boost and it will put it up to 140 pounds 65 for food essentials for October so that's what I'll do thank you so much for watching today it ended up being a bit kind of all over the place with the budget because I realised that I'd made that mistake. And with these tuck shops and frugal stores and IOUs and stuff like that, it's kind of a bit more complicated with my budget in these last few months. But it's going to be a good way to help me keep on track with the goals for no low spend year. Like I say, please let us know how you're doing with all your budget stuff, your frugal living. It's so fantastic to be able to share about that together in the comments and get to know you who's watching the videos that bit better. Appreciate you all so much. Much love and have a fantastic week. See you soon. Bye.